House to scrap the Senate resurfaces at the Constitutional Review public hearing. Later on the program, I will ask Senator Gershom Bassi if he thinks scrapping the Senate will significantly reduce the cost of government. The House of Representatives also had a zonal public hearing on the review of the 1999 Constitution. I will ask the Chairman of the Special Committee on Constitutional Review in the North Central Zone if this is not a duplication of the Senate's efforts. Plus, the Senate will soon begin deliberation on an executive bill that seeks to increase the retirement age of teachers. This is the Hall of Chambers. I am Jesu Adin. Teachers in the country are already looking forward to better days as the Senate received an executive bill from President Muhammad Buhari that seeks to increase the retirement age of teachers from 60 to 65. Their years of service will also be extended from 35 years to 40 years. The intent of the bill is to, among other things, seek to, one, address the discrepancies between first degree and higher national diploma for the purpose of employment in public service establishments, ministries, departments, and agencies of government, and provide sector space in Nigeria, and two, to identify the problems of, and provide solutions to end the dichotomy between the two certificates. Particular issue has been in the front banner for a long time. I recall that in the House of Representatives, in the, between 2003 and 2007, this was one bill that was so important and is one way of encouraging our polytechnic graduates. That should not take away from the kind of training they receive, but in fact, it's supposed to be a motivation for our polytechnic graduates. So many issues were thrown up at the public hearing on constitutional review as different interest groups advance different agenda all in a bid to enhance inclusiveness and promote the tenets and principles of true federalism in the country. The Senate seems to be getting some knocks as not everyone believes the process is credible. Some even call it a waste of time and resources and others want the adoption of the 1963 constitution rather than reviewing the 1999 constitution. Joining me on the program is Senator Gershom Bassi representing Cross River South Senatorial District. It's good to have you on the program. Let's start from the just concluded zonal public hearing on the alteration of the 1999 Constitution. Many lawmakers see this as an opportunity to produce a document that will reflect the wishes of we the people. But some prominent Nigerians have come out to discredit these efforts and call for the adoption of the 1963 Constitution. Do you feel this amendment process may become futile considering the rejection it seems to have gotten. I think uh, in Nigeria, as in other nations, progress is incremental. Um, what happens is that um, um, successive um, people and citizens build on, on the efforts of their ancestors and their predecessors. So I think that uh, Nigeria can be no different. We cannot keep going back to the beginning every time. We must build on the successes of, or the efforts of our predecessors. But and I think that's what we're doing. But they actually believe that the 1963 constitution is more inclusive than the 1999 constitution. Well, how, far, how far back do you want to go? How far back do you, why 1963? You might not go back to 1914. You know, how far back do you want to go? Uh, at some point, we have to just say, look, Let's just keep moving. Let's move forward. Uh, with the experience that we have, uh, the whole effort of a constitutional amendment is to try to make the um, constitution a bit more perfect. And perfection is a journey. It's not a. It's not a. It's not a one-stop shop. It's not. It just doesn't. You don't just achieve perfection 
um, immediately. You keep striving for it, and that's what we're doing. Uh, whatever our predecessors did, uh, we are building on that. Those that come after us will still build on that, and will keep moving towards perfection. And uh, that's that's the way I see it. So many issues were raised at the zonal public hearing, but once of such issues that seem to be dominating public discourse is the call to scrap the Senate as a way of reducing costs, reducing government spending. Is this a valid argument? Well, I'm not sure. How much really does, this, does the Senate cost us? Maybe 1% of our budget at best. And that 1% is not just for the senators alone, it's for the entire institutions, including the the various legislative institutions, uh, public complaints commission, and so on, that are part of the um, of the Senate, and so I, I think we're backing up the wrong tree. If we're looking at cost cutting, we should be looking at other areas, not uh, the legislature. And why do you think the attention is always on the Senate? I hear things like part-time legislature and all that, but what I'm saying is that those costs are really um, not are not that significant compared to the amount of money that is spent elsewhere in the national budget. We sit down here every year and we do the appropriations and we see where there's heavy spending. And uh, I think we should be going to the big ticket items, the big areas of overhead expenditure, the big areas of waste, uh, instead of um, uh, scapegoating the Senate or the National Assembly. There seems to be a growing discontent among Nigerians about the state of affairs in the country. How should government handle this situation where there is a spike in ethnic and religious tension, insecurity, secessionist agitations, and other forms of violence? Well, I think um, um, government, first of all, the executive you're talking about, for us in the legislature, we've tried to be as honest as possible about this whole thing. You've seen our debates on the floor. Um, people even within the ruling party have come out to be extremely candid about um, the situation in the country. And I think that the executive should take a leaf from the book of uh, APC senators and legislatures who have been extremely straightforward and candid about the situation. And if they begin to do that, uh, we will see uh, some progress. There are also concerns about the country's rising debt profile, but the Senate continues to approve more borrowings for the federal government. Are you worried that the borrowing could cause more economic woes for the country? Well, the, the, like uh, people have said repeatedly, the issue is not borrowing. The issue is how you apply the funds that you borrow. And uh, for, for me, I think that um, other nations have borrowed heavily. Uh, to invest in, um, I mean, of course, the most uh, famous one was the Marshall Plan after the Second World War, which was heavy borrowing, uh, but it was targeted borrowing and uh, invested in, 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 in areas that made sense. So we need to invest in infrastructure, in areas that will give us a return on our investment. And don't you think the focus should shift towards revenue generating agencies by empowering them to do more rather than accumulating debts? How much, how, much, how much revenue can they generate? I mean, Nigeria needs, I mean, yesterday I raised the emotion on the floor of the Senate where we said that Nigeria needs about $3 trillion uh, in order to bridge the infrastructure gap. Uh, well, you know, we need, we need significant amounts of money. And so we need to find that money somewhere uh, in order to, but if the, the beauty of it is that if it is invested in, say, infrastructure, uh, that alone brings a return on investment. And that return on investment will continue to service the loans and even pay back the loans. So I think the idea of borrowing, uh, we shouldn't get flustered with the idea of borrowing. Rather, how do we apply the funds that we borrow? You were directly affected by the nationwide NSAS protest that was later hijacked by hoodlums to wreak havoc. When you did a postmortem of the situation, did you feel this was caused by a failure of government or just a group of criminal-minded people carrying out random attacks? Well, both, I think. I think um, in my state, for instance, uh, we are aware that um, there were failures, serious failures on the part of um, the state government, um, especially when, um, when um, uh, for me, when I interacted with the security heads, there were certain complaints which signified uh, certain failures. 
but also at the same time, uh, there were criminal there was criminality involved. For instance, till today we don't know. Uh, we've not received any report of any kind. At least I haven't seen any report of any kind on the causes of that um, violence. What caused it? Almost 200 houses were affected in Calabar. But it seems there's hunger in the land. And you know what they say about a hungry man. Well, we don't know. That's my point. We don't know what the cause was because the state government has not investigated it in any way, shape or form. So here you have a situation where the Calabar was invaded and nobody knows what happened. So what do you call that? So why is there yet to be an investigation? I'm not the, I'm not the governor. You need to ask the governor. But you are a member of the government yourself. No, I, I don't know. We don't know. Are legislators from your region making any legislative intervention in this regard? I have not heard of anything. So as I am now, we don't know whether there's an investigation, whether there's any... Um, we don't know. We don't know what happened there. So nobody seems to know. And how would you describe your relationship with the state government? Well, uh, the relationship was quite uh, cordial. Of course, you know that my governor moved from the, a from the PDP to the APC just uh, a few days ago. Uh, but my relationship had been cordial with him. Are you also joining the APC like the governor of Cross River State, who recently dumped the PDP and joined the All Progressives Congress? There are speculations that there would be a political realignment among leaders in the state. No, no. I, 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 he says that the reason he joined the APC was to move, to align Cross River State with the center. Do you believe in his cause? I, I don't understand it. So I won't, I can't, I can't, I can't follow him uh, to, for a reason that I don't understand. TVC Communications, we're all about our audience, millions of viewers, listeners, and readers every day all around Nigeria. Our two TV stations are among the most watched in Nigeria. TVC News is our award-winning 24-hour national and international news channel headquartered here in Lagos, broadcasting live from our custom-built, state-of-the-art news headquarters. TVC, the top-rated family entertainment channel, is the place for fun, music, and information. With news bureau and studios around the country and the ability to go live anywhere, anytime, we are first for breaking news in Nigeria. Awarded the NMMA TV station of the year, TVC News is the station of choice for news that... And when you can't watch us, listen to us. 102.3 Max FM Lagos and 90.9. Max FM Abuja are now ranked among the most listened to radio stations in Nigeria. In Lagos, TVC, our leading family entertainment TV channel, has a 47% market share. But this is just the start of our journey as we plan to add even more services to entertain and inform our ever-growing audience. Thanks for being part of the TVC communication story. The House of Representatives also held its own constitutional review zonal public hearing across the country as part of efforts to tinker with the 1999 constitution that currently defines the coexistence of citizens in Nigeria. Joining me is the chairman of the House of Representatives Special Committee on Constitution Review in the North Central Zone, Honorable Abbas Tajuddin, representing Zara City Federal Constituency, of Kaduna State. Welcome to the program. The House of Representatives just concluded public hearings on the review of the 1999 Constitution as amended. Give us an overview of the memoranda the committee received in the North Central that you chair. Let us into the major desires of the people. We have, as earlier enumerated during the opening ceremony, that uh, the National Assembly under the chairmanship of uh, Honorable Idris Ahmed Wase, the chairman of uh, the Constitutional Review Committee, have already done a thorough job in processing at least 111 bills, which are subdivided into 11 thematic areas. 
Uh, those are the ones that we brought before the public domain to uh, intimate them about what the National Assembly has done and to seek for their additional inputs. And we gave them the opportunity if there are some aspects of what we have done that has not covered their areas of interest, that they are at liberty to come up with memorandum on them. Happily, and thank you, uh, happily, at the end of this uh, two-day interaction, we were able to receive about 70 memorandum that are caught across almost all facets of uh, human endeavor, from the state government, from the national state house of assembly, from the local government, from the NOLGI, from NLC, and other labor-related organization, Nigerian Bar Association, NGOs, uh, name it. We have received 70 different uh, memorandums, and uh, we want to assure all the people of uh, North Central State, particularly the three catchment areas, that the contributions they have made will not go in vain. We'll make sure that they are well documented, well reported, and well presented to the main committee. And uh, we'll do everything humanly possible to ensure that what they have said counts in whatever uh, constitutional review activities that will be in Abuja. Autonomy for the local government was one of the major highlights of the last constitution review exercise. What assurance should Nigerians have this time that it will sail through with, state, with the states? Well, as you can see, the evolution of power is one paramount area. A lot of people are yearning uh, to see that um, federal government is, uh, the powers of central government is reduced uh, in favor of the states. I think it is one area that uh, I can see a lot of passion uh, from the people here. Creation of local governments uh, is another area that has uh, received the attention of this committee here. Uh, local government autonomy, particularly financial and administrative, is another area of interest. And I want to assure that whatever is your interest, whether it is uh, major or minor, this our committee will do everything humanly possible to report it and to ensure that the right decisions are taken for the benefit of the general public. The local jazz center was more of Kogi people's presence. Why didn't we see representation from other states? Well, without as a, uh, answering for the two states, I just want to interpolate that why perhaps we did not see much of Kwara and Niger is as a result of the Senate sitting that has already taken place a week ago. Where, um, uh, major presentations by Niger and Kwara state governments were made. Uh, perhaps they may in their own wisdom feel that uh, since they have made presentation to the Senate committee, there will be no point for them to come and replicate it here because it's the same National Assembly, it's the same constitutional review that at the end will collect and harmonize all the contributions made by the two chambers. So I think by and large, the fact that the Senate started their own a week before us probably account for why. In the past, there has been synergy between the two chambers of the National Assembly at the Constitution Review exercise, such as this. This time, we saw both chambers duplicating efforts rather than do things together. Why, why did this happen? Well, I think it gives better opportunities. If they say we decided to do it together, Naturally, there might be only six centers that would have uh, conducted this public hearing. But the fact that the Senate has chosen entirely different centers, and the House has the, 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 the decided to also do their own in different centers, that gives Nigerians the opportunity to be able to come and uh, contribute their quota. So I think by and large, it is a welcome development. It gives people the opportunity to actually come to the different centers created by both the Senate and the House to give their own contribution. The argument has always been whether or not Nigeria should keep amending the constitution given to us by the military. Eminent Nigerians have advocated for a brand new constitution that the citizens can say is theirs. Why isn't the parliament looking in that direction? I don't think what uh, you have said is correct. 
is a minority view that uh, the 1999 constitution is entirely bad for Nigeria. Very few people have mentioned that. But what I can hear and uh, understand is that people are yearning for fundamental changes in the constitution such that it will answer their yearnings and aspirations. And I think this process that we are currently doing is one way of ensuring that whatever deficiency we have in the 1999 constitution is actually uh, resolved in the best interest of the Nigerian public. What have been the gains of the public hearing? Well, we see democracy in action because democracy is a uh, government of the people, for the people, and by the people. We have given the people of Kogi, Niger, and uh, Kwara the opportunity to come on one-on-one -on -one to tell us where and where they want the, these changes to take place. I think it is a very important step, and uh, at the end of the day, whatever we come up with in the National Assembly as far as uh, areas of amendments are concerned, people will be proud that it is the input they have generated that came out with that. So I think it is very commendable, uh, the public caring that has been initiated to give people the voice to say what and where they want changes to be made. What should Nigerians expect from your committee after now? Well, we'll go back to Abuja and write our report. As I've said, we'll make sure that every contribution, every presentation counts in our report. We we'll submit to the Mother Committee and we we'll try to defend it as much as possible. Uh, the committee, the Mother Committee has a roadmap, has a timetable uh, for the rest of uh, the two years we have. We will ensure that uh, that uh, roadmap map, map is followed religiously to ensure that um, the beautiful work we have started at this time does not go in vain like previous attempts. We'll ensure that we diligently continue with these processes to its logical conclusion so that before the end of the Ninth Assembly, a revised constitution will be available for Nigerians that they will be proud of. <laughs> Our conversation continues online. Follow me on Twitter. My handle is at Tijesu Adeoye TVC. Also, do not forget to follow TVC News on all our social media platforms and subscribe to the YouTube channel to get more updates on the Halo Chambers and all other programs. Thank you for watching. See you next time.